still morning. Good morning. I got a question for you. Do you need a hero to guide you? Hmm? Do you need a hero to be the centerpiece of who you are? Do you need a hero to look for uh, to for inspiration and stuff like that? Hmm? Do you need a hero? Hmm. What is a hero? What is a hero? I'm reading from Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Um, beware of the Webster's 1828 Dictionary online. Actually, I have to remove that from um, the link for that on the channel because they, um, the online edition of Webster's 1828 doesn't necessarily always match the printed edition of the Webster's 1828. Mm. They did something to it. So, But anyway, what is a hero? Now, I will have you know that the word hero does not appear in the authorized version of the scriptures. Uh, and to my knowledge, it doesn't even appear in the Bible. But, you know, is America a land of heroes? Do we need a hero? Do we need a hero? What is a hero? What is a hero? Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Hero. There are four, uh, um, four things here. Noun. A man of distinguished valor, intrepidity, or enterprise in danger as a hero in arms. If I have mispronounced that word, Please forgive me. So a hero in arms. So like a war veteran, okay? A military guy or something like that. A hero like that, okay? Who saved the villages from an attack or something like that, okay? All right? A great, number two, a great, illustrious, or extraordinary person as a hero in learning. A hero in learning. Hmm. Hero in learning. So, heroes in learning. Oh, maybe like, say, John MacArthur. John Calvin, right? Calvinists. Hmm. Peter Ruckman. Hmm. Heroes in learning, huh? Oh, what's that? Uh, Hawkins or Dawkins guy, right? There's a Hawkins and a Dawkins, right? Or Bill Nye the Science Guy, right? Kent Helvin, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heroes in learning, huh? Number three, in a poem or romance, the principal personage, the main character of a story, you know, the movie, the hero of the movie, the hero of the story, okay? Or the person who has the principal share in the transactions related, as Achilles in the, Il in the Iliad or whatever, Ulysses in the Odyssey, or Ulysses, yes, Ulysses in the Odyssey, and Aeneas in the Aeneid. Okay? So the main character of a story, all right? Look at number four here. And uh, my brother put this in the, the script, in the comment section of one of the videos. And here we are today. In pagan mythology, a hero was an illustrious person, mortal indeed, but supposed by the populace to partake of immortality. Oh, say like Batman. Doctor Strange. Iron Man. Captain America. Thor, right, right, Superman, whose only weakness was kryptonite, Shazam. In pagan mythology, a hero was an illustrious person, mortal indeed, but supposed by the populace to partake of immortality. Oh, like Donald Trump? Like um, uh, a Hollywood actress or actor, like Brad Pitt or Angelina Jolie, or what about the sports people like LeBron James? 
Mm. And after his death, to be placed among the gods. After their death, to be placed among the gods. Hmm. I know that since uh, Peter Ruckman died, there are a lot of people that hit the modern Ruckmanites who are bloodthirsty savages, okay? Um, yeah, the modern Ruckmanites have elevated Peter Ruckman to the status of godhood. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting about what the definitions of a hero and I ask you, do you need a hero? See, we who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, we don't need a hero. We have our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who dwells within us, our Savior, our Lord, our God, our Father, our King. Okay? He is our Father. We don't need a hero. But you need a hero? Hmm? Now, some of you all, well, there's nothing wrong with looking to so-and-so for an, an example. For an example, yes. For an example, yes. And we're going to look at that. But when some of you out there start elevating certain people to the status of godhood, we don't do that. No? Look in on the video of Mark the Messenger of Satan. Look at how people defend that heretic. Okay? Uh, some, uh, a couple of people have even, they didn't use the word hero, but uh, Mark the Messenger is their hero. Really? Really? Peter Ruckman. Some of the Ruckmanites that defend him. And the latter years of Peter Ruckman's uh, life, uh, and the videos that you can find here on online, here on YouTube, um, some of those uh, older sermons, that guy was just feeding off of the crowd, and they feeding off of him. Towards the end of his life, he began to believe his own mystique, his own legacy. It started to go to his head. Same with other YouTube uh, celebrities. Who are preachers? But the, Joe Rogan, for example, who could wipe the floor with me with one hand tied behind his back and his left hand broken. Okay, yes, he could. Yes, he could. But there are those who uh, elevate him to a status of godhood. Can't do any wrong. He, they look to him as their hero or an idol. Which one is it? Which one is it? Do you need a hero? Who's your hero? Huh? Talking about the heroes of the faith, right? In uh, Hebrews. Uh, the scriptures never says that. We'll look at that. We're going to look at that. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along, word by word, verse by verse, at the scriptures that we are going to be looking at today. Follow me along. Okay? Check me out. Follow me along. Hold me accountable. Um, Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not taking anything out of context. Check me out. Check me out. Okay? Follow me along. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Ezekiel chapter 23. Ezekiel chapter 23. We are going to be reading verses 1 under verse 21 with some light expository along the way. Okay? Follow me along. Word for word, verse by verse. Okay? The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother. They committed whoredoms in Egypt. They committed whoredoms in their youth. There were their breasts pressed, and there they bruised the teats of their virginity. Uh, there, there are those out there, heretics, uh, some Muslims even, that will uh, say that Ezekiel chapter 23 proves that God hates women or something like that. The Lord had me. To, it's an allegory that will be in the description box. That's that's total stupidity and nonsense. Okay, all right. Just just to let you know, that will be in the description box. But let's continue. 
And the names of them were Ahola the elder and Ahola Ba her sister. And they were mine, and they bare sons and daughters. Thus were their names. Samaria is Ahola, and Jerusalem Ahola Ba. And Ahola played the harlot when she was mine, and she doted on her lovers, on the Assyrians, her neighbors, doted, followed, looked up to, admired, awe, that kind of stuff. Played with, you know. Dote around, you know. Verses 6 on to verse 7 here. Which were clothed with blue, captains and rulers, all of them desirable young men. Mm. Mm. Horsemen riding upon horses. Oh, so they looked beautiful. They looked impressive. Oh, like a Hollywood actress like Scarlett Whore Johansson. Mm. Or a Hollywood actor like Brad Pitt. Or a sports superstar like LeBron James. Hmm. Thus she committed whoredom with them, with all them that were the chosen men of Assyria. Mm -hmm. And with all on whom she doted, with all their idols, she defiled herself. With all their idols. Uh, turn to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 25 and 26. Now some who will go to defend their heresy and their pagan idolatries, they will come to certain places like this in Scripture and say, you can't use this for instruction in righteousness because it's only specifically talking about a statue so it cannot apply onto any other form of idolatry or any other image it can only be used to define that yeah have God said heretics do that and heretics will do that a lot to defend the a certain day of the month okay a lot of heretics will do that to defend their worship of the Catholic God for a day Okay, uh, they will. They'll come to certain parts, like uh, for example, Jeremiah chapter ten, and say that cannot be used to discredit the worship of the Catholic God for a day because it's specifically talking about that. It cannot be used in any other application. Uh, oh, and people who say that are what? People who say that are what? Uh, hero number two, a great illustrious or extraordinary person as a hero in learning? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hmm. You, got, you need a hero, huh? You got a hero, huh? I pity you. I pity you. If you're a hero, is a mere man like yourself. I pity you. I pity you. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 25 and 26. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. So see, that's talking about a statue. It cannot be applied in any other way. Really. Hmm. What are what are the idols of today? Look on television. Look in the Hollywood movies. Hmm? The theater. People dressed up. Uh, these comic book uh, characters. Thor, Doctor Strange, Iron Man, uh, Batman, Superman, Shazam, Black Adam or whatever his name is, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, taking the title of our Lord, The Rock. Another guy who could wipe the floor with me with his uh, left hand tied behind him and his right hand broken. Yeah, okay, yeah. Still, still, okay. The silver and gold that's on them. 
this is talking about a statue. But, you, you know, television and even here on YouTube with the advertisements that they put up and the videos that they promote showing these horish looking women and uh, guys with, uh, what do they call it, bling and stuff like that. See, an idol, yes, this is talking about a statue. But an idol is not just a statue, persons. Okay? It's not. It's a little bit more to it. Verse 26. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like, like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Hmm. hmm. Okay? Okay, now go back to Ezekiel chapter 23 and let's read verse 8. Neither left she her whoredoms hmm, brought from Egypt. For in her youth there they lay with her, and they bruised the breasts of her virginity, and poured their whoredom upon her. Now, go to Isaiah chapter 31. Isaiah chapter 31. You got to remember for our instruction in righteousness, okay? When you, we read about Egypt in the Old Testament, yes, it's talking about actual, literal, physical Egypt. But for us today, you, I'm in here in America. I've never been to Egypt. So, instruction in righteousness, what is Egypt for us today? That. The world. Okay? The world. That's why when you come to what we're looking at, that's how you apply it for us today as instruction in righteousness. Yes, it's talking about literal, physical Egypt. Yes, just like Jeremiah chapter 10. It's, yes, talking about an actual physical idol. But is that all it applies for, for our instruction in righteousness for today? You idiot! Oh, beg your pardon, I'm sorry. Hmm? No, no. Okay? No. And that little remark was not for you, the common viewer, my brethren. That was for the chosen ones. Okay? But, okay? Let's, let's continue here. Uh, Isaiah chapter 31, verses 100, verse 3. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help, and stay on horses and trust in chariots, because they are many, and in horsemen, because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek, neither seek the Lord. Hmm. Yeah. Look at that. And trust in chariots because they are many, and in horsemen because they are very strong. And here in Ezekiel, though it's talking about the Assyrians, uh, verse 6, which were clothed with blue captains and rulers, all of them desirable young men, right, horsemen riding upon horses. Hmm. Hmm, okay. Go back to Isaiah chapter uh, 31, verse 2. Yet he also is wise and will bring evil and will not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the help of them that work iniquity. Now, the Egyptians, those of the world, are men and not God. Hero number four. In pagan mythology, a hero was an illustrious person, mortal indeed, but supposed by the populace to partake of immortality. Hmm. And after his death to be placed among the gods. Hmm. He liked the most high? Hmm. Again, uh, I know this is rub might rub some of you the wrong way, Look at what the Ruckmanites did for Peter Ruckman. Look at the latter years of his life, how he himself was starting to go or follow and fall in love with his own legacy. Look at certain people here on YouTube whose success have gone right to their heads and allow people to worship them as if they are gods. Yeah. Now the Egyptians are men, not gods. And their horses flesh and not spirit. Their horses. Things they ride upon. Things that they do their work for and work with. It's flesh. 
not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is hoping shall fall down, and they all shall fail together. So, what happens when your hero lets you down? What happens when evidence comes about your hero to suggest to you that he isn't what he said he was or who you think he is? Yet, because he's your hero, you still support him and defend him. That's somebody who has made an idol or a hero out of a man. Now the Egyptians are men and not God. You need a hero? If you need a hero, you don't have Jesus Christ within you. And I gotta say this, in, in perhaps maybe one of my older videos, uh, if I've ever said, uh, like, well, my heroes were this, I repent of that, okay? May I, I might have said that in one of my older videos. I might have. I don't know. Uh, the Lord has given me uh, quite a few videos to do. Uh, I don't have the time to go and look for the off chance if I had said that. You know, that's something that my enemies would do who have no life, okay? But if I have ever said that myself personally, that, you know, my heroes were... I repent of that. That's wrong. That's evil. We don't need heroes. We need our Father. We need our Father. And you, and the, you know what the thing about the definition of heroes that we looked at, okay, as a hero in arms, a hero in learning, the main character of a story, and someone... Um, who was illustrious, mortal indeed, and then in death to be placed among the gods. Okay? That all has to do with man. That all has to do with man. And Jesus Christ is God our Father. Okay? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh, yes. He was a man, but he wasn't a man like us. Job said, he is not a man like I am. Meaning he never sinned. Never sinned. We sin every day. Why is your hero another mortal man? Why? Why? Or, or is your hero some fictitious pagan mythological being like Thor or Batman? Huh? You, you got some problems. If you, you know, you know, if one of them is your hero, you, you got some problems if you have heroes. You really do. We don't need heroes. We don't need a hero. We need our father. Okay. We need our father. Now go back to Ezekiel chapter 23, picking up at verse 9. Wherefore I have delivered her into the hand of her lovers, into the hand of the Assyrians, upon whom she doted. Verses 10 on to verse 12. These discovered her nakedness. They took her sons and her daughters, and slew her with the sword. And she became famous among women, for they had executed judgment upon her. And when her sister Aholabah saw this, she was more corrupt in her inordinate love than she, and in her whoredoms more than her sister in her, in her whoredoms. She doted upon the Syrians and her neighbors, captains and rulers, clothed most gorgeously, horsemen riding upon horses, all of them desirable young men. Hmm. So they were great to look to. They looked like heroes, didn't they? Obviously, right? And this is twice. 
that the Lord says this in Scripture about these people. Hmm. They obviously looked the part, didn't they? Didn't they? Yes. Uh, Hosea chapter 2. Hosea chapter 2. Hosea chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 13. Hosea chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 13. And now will I discover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers, and none shall deliver her out of mine hand. I will also cause all her mirth to cease, her feast days, her new moons, and her Sabbaths, and all her solemn feasts. And I will destroy her vines and her fig trees, whereof she has said, These are my rewards that my lovers have given me. And I will make them a forest, and the beasts of the field shall eat them. Ah, yes. And what does Satan say? How does Satan tempt you? If you will fall down and worship me, all will be thine. Hmm. Yeah, you, 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 um, and I'm being very polite with you. You foolish fools out there who um, count, you know, these Marvel, DC comic book superheroes as heroes uh, onto you or inspiration. Uh, you're, you're, you're a fool. You say in your heart there is no God. So you're putting a fictitious character as your hero? Well, what if Trump's your hero? Good Lord, man. You're crazy. You're absolutely crazy. <laughs> okay? You're absolutely crazy. But see, here in Hosea, talking about how, um, and I, about how um, her feasts, her new moons, and her Sabbaths, which were all contrary to the actual Sabbaths and feasts of our Lord. Okay? Man-made holy days. The Lord doesn't approve of those things. Okay? He doesn't. Right? Mm. Mm. And because the woman in Hosea, Israel, okay? Yes, Gomer, yes, but that was a type for Israel. Uh, going after her lovers. Lovers whom she doted upon treated her poorly for a means of judgment against her. <laughs> you need a hero, huh, buddy? Go back to Ezekiel now. Picking up at verse 13. Then I saw that she was defiled, that they took both one way. And that she increased her whoredoms. For when she saw men portrayed upon the wall, the images of the Chaldeans portrayed with vermilion. Oh, so these are talking about the hieroglyphs, right? But the images, the images <laughs> of the Chaldeans portrayed with vermilion. Hmm, they're images. Hmm. Is this talking about a statue? No. No, well, graven isn't there, is it? No. But these images. Hmm. So, what do we see so far in Ezekiel chapter 23? We see twice here, looking at verse 6, which were clothed with blue captains and rulers, all of them desirable young men, horsemen riding upon horses. And uh, where was that? Um, uh, where was that? Uh, verse 12. She doted upon the Assyrians, her neighbors, captains and rulers clothed most gorgeously, horsemen riding upon horses, all of them desirable young men. And then right here, <laughs> right here, verse 14, and that she increased her whoredoms, for when she saw men portrayed upon the wall, the images of the Chaldeans portrayed with vermilion, verse 15, girded with girdles upon their loins, exceeding in dyed attire upon their heads, all of them princes to look to, after the manner of the Babylonians of Chaldea, the land of their nativity. Hmm. Hmm. So they saw those images and these people, and they were like awestruck. 
awestruck. Doesn't say anything about that they were their idols, but they held them as their heroes, didn't they? They obviously wanted to be like them. See, idolatry and hero are very closely linked. Okay, very closely linked. Okay. Verse 16. And as soon as she saw them with her eyes, she doted upon them and sent messengers unto them into Chaldea. And the Babylonians came to her into the bed of love, and they defiled her with their whoredom, and she was polluted with them, and her mind was alienated from them. And of course, of course, Proverbs chapter 7. Proverbs 7. Proverbs 7. Verses 13 on to verse 23. This harlot woman. Hmm. From, what, what, what is this? Here? And the Babylon, in verse 17 in Ezekiel 23. And the Babylonians came to her into the bed of love. Proverbs 7, verses 13 on verse 23. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impotent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. And this is the harlot woman of Proverbs 7. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Oh! Let's read. I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry. Oh, didn't that look so good? Yeah. With carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. Loves. For the good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. Oh, who's going to know? Who's going to know if you set up the idol in your heart? Your hero who you look to for everything. Yeah. He hath taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed with her much fair speech. She caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips she forced him. He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. Till a dart strike through his liver as a bird hasteth to the snare and knoweth not that it is for his life. Hmm. Go back to Ezekiel chapter 23. Okay. Picking up at verse 18. So she discovered her whoredoms and discovered her nakedness. Then my mind was alienated from her, like as my mind was alienated from her sister. Yet she multiplied whoredoms. Yet she multiplied her whoredoms in calling to remembrance the days of her youth, wherein she had played the harlot in the land of Egypt. And what does Paul say? If I build the things that I had once destroyed, uh, rebuild the things that I had once destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Oh, a dog returning to its vomit. Okay? For she doted upon their paramours, whose flesh is as the flesh of asses, and whose issue is like the issue of horses. Thus thou calledest to remembrance the lewdness of thy youth, in bruising thy teats by the Egyptians, for the paps of thy youth. And for this, Hosea chapter 4. Hosea chapter 4. Hosea chapter 4. Hosea chapter 4. We want verses 12 on to verse 13 to start. My people ask counsel at their stocks, and their staff declareth unto them. For the spirit of whoredoms hath caused them to err, and they have gone a-whoring from under their God. 
They sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills under oaks and poplars and elms because the shadow thereof is good. Therefore your daughters shall commit whoredom and your spouses shall commit adultery. And let's skip to verses 17 on to verse 19. Ephraim is joined unto idols. Let him alone. Their drink is sour. They have committed whoredom continually. Her rulers with shame do love. Give ye. The wind hath bound her up in her wings, and they shall be ashamed because of their sacrifices. While we're here, let's go to Hosea chapter 8. Hosea chapter 8. You know, if you have people, man, mankind, who are your heroes, you need to uh, think twice about it, my friend. You need to think twice about it. Because if you have a hero who is of mankind, you don't have Jesus Christ. If you are truly saved, born again, converted to the church of the living God, and you're putting someone up on a pedestal, making them your hero, you need to check yourself. And we're going to look at this. We're going to look at some of these examples, especially of Paul and Pope Peter, about how when people went to them to elevate them to high status as their heroes, you could say. But, Hosea chapter 8, Set the trumpet to thy mouth, he shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord, because they have transgressed my covenant and trespassed against my law. Israel shall cry unto me, My God, we know thee. Israel hath cast off the thing that is good. The enemy shall pursue him. And how is the enemy pursuing a lot of people today? Oh. Offering them heroes. Offering them heroes who are basically idols. Decked out with all gold and silver looking good. Yeah. Yeah. Woe be to you if you have a hero. Woe be to you if you have a hero. They have set up kings, but not by me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. It's not that he didn't know, but he wasn't involved. He didn't know them. He didn't have the relationship with them. That's what that's talking about. They didn't come to me. I, I didn't. I didn't want. I didn't put this guy there. Yeah. Of their silver and their gold have they made them idols, that they may be cut off. And remember, when it talks about an idol, you can only talk about a statue. Yeah. Yeah. You're a hero. Yeah. A great, illustrious, or extraordinary person as a hero in learning, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Thy calf, O Samaria, hath cast thee off. Mine anger is kindled against them. How long will it be ere they attain to innocency? Well, I'm innocent. I, I have the grace to go ahead and set up idols in my heart to worship these people who look so beautiful as my heroes. Oh, you poor old sot. For from Israel was it also. The workmen made it. Therefore it is not God. But the calf of Samaria shall be broken in pieces. For they have sown the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. It hath no stalk. The bud shall yield no meal. If so be it yield, the stranger shall swallow it up. Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles, as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. For they are gone up to Assyria. And wild ass alone by himself, Ephraim hath hired lovers. Yea, though they have hired among the nations, now will I gather them, and they shall sorrow a little for the burden of the king of princes. Lowercase p. Hmm. 
Because Ephraim hath made many altars to sin. Altars shall be unto him to sin. We addressed this in a previous video about the altar thing. I have written to him the great things of my law. But they were counted as a strange thing. They sacrificed flesh for the sacrifices of mine offerings. And eat it. But the Lord accepteth them not. Now will he remember their iniquity and visit their sins. They shall return to Egypt. Which he never, which the Lord never wanted for anybody. Who, uh, who he brought out of Egypt. He saved you. He brought you out of Egypt, the world. He doesn't want you going back to the world. To have a hero. For Israel hath forgotten his maker. You got a hero who's a man. Have you forgotten who your maker is? And buildeth temples. And Judah hath multiplied fenced cities. But I will send a fire upon his cities. And they shall devour the palaces thereof. Isaiah chapter 52. Isaiah chapter 52. I woke up this morning with my mind. Stayed on Jesus. <laughs> Beg your pardon. But I woke up with this in, in my head. Uh, Isaiah chapter 52. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah chapter 52. Isaiah chapter 52. We want verses 11 on to verse 13. Depart ye. Depart ye. Go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. For ye shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your re reward. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be extolled, exalted and extolled, and be very high. Look at verse 6. Therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. And of course, we go to John chapter 8, verse 23 and 24 for the reference for this. Okay? Come out from amongst them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. You notice this here in Isaiah chapter 52, about verse 11. Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence, touch no unclean thing. Okay? The worship of idols, or setting up in your heart of a hero. But on verse 6 in Isaiah chapter 52, Therefore my people shall know my name, therefore they shall know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. And John chapter 8, John chapter 8 verses 23 and 24, and he said unto them, Ye are from beneath. I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, and Trinitarians hate this one, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. I am he. I am he. Who? God the Father. Totally. Utterly and completely God. The fullness of the Godhead bodily. Spirit, soul, and body. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Okay, one, one being. One being. Okay? Not three persons that make one God. No. Insanity. Okay? But here in Isaiah chapter 52, about this depart ye, depart ye. In three dispensations, we are told that. Under the law. Okay, here in Isaiah chapter 52. Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out from the midst of her. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. Okay, today's dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Okay, okay, three dispensations. During the law, after the law, and during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, Second uh, Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter th uh, 6, uh, verse 17, on to verse 18. 
Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. And I shall be a father unto you. You're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. You don't need a hero. If you are saved and will be a father unto you, you have the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is that Spirit dwelling within you. You have the Father. What do you need a hero for, man? What's wrong with you? What? What? Don't you have the testimony of Him in the Scriptures to live by? Yes, we have the example given to us of Paul and Peter. Uh, Paul especially for this dispensation. Yes! But does that make... Does, does that mean that we make Paul our hero? What would Paul say to that? We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay? You're saved, born again, converted. You don't need a hero. But if you're, you're a Christian, you need a hero? Hmm. <laughs> now, let, let's go to Judges. Judges chapter 8. Now, let's look at some examples of this. Judges. Judges chapter 8. Gideon. Good old Gideon. Okay? Judges chapter 8. Verses 22 and verse 27. The men of Israel, now this is after Gideon, you know, got a good victory and the Lord was giving peace to the land and hence we're picking this up. Uh, verses 22 on to verse 27. Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule thou over us, both thou and thy son, and thy son's son also. For thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. Now, as far as Gideon as being a hero, okay, uh, Hero, a man of distinguished valor, intrepid, intrepidity, or, enterpri or enterprise in danger, as a hero in arms. Okay? So, I guess you could say Gideon may all fit that qualification, right? But look at this. The men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule thou over us, both thou and thy son, and thy son's son also, for thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. Gideon was their hero. How does Gideon react? And Gideon said unto them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. Amen. There's a but to this though. There's a but here. And Gideon said unto them, I would desire, I desire a request of you. I will rule over you but, here's where Gideon blew it. And Gideon is mentioned in Hebrews 11, which you are waiting for us to get to. We're going to get to that, okay? We're going to get to that. We have to go through this process first, okay? And Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of you, that ye would give me every man the earrings of his prey. For they had golden earrings, because they were Ishmaelites. And they answered, We will willingly give them, and they spread a garment and did cast therein every man the earrings of his prey. And the weight of the golden earrings that he requested was a thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold, beside ornaments and collars and purple raiment that was on the kings of Midian, and beside the chains that were about their camels' necks. Hmm. So a lot of the ornaments, the accoutrements that were with these people, Gideon apparently got reveled in them, didn't he? That's what said the scripture. And Gideon made an ephod thereof, and put it in his city, even in Ophrah. And all Israel went thither a whoring, af a whoring after it, which thing became a snare unto Gideon and to his house. So, he rejected them making him ruler. Yes, they, yes he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Amen. But it suggests to us, doesn't it? Look at the verses. That Gideon kind of got enamored in his own mystique. 
in his own legend. Says here, because of all that stuff, he made, what did he do? What did he do? And Gideon made an ephod thereof and put it in his city, even in Ophrah. And all Israel went thither, a horn after it, which then became a snare unto Gideon and to his house. I, I'm not going to rule over you. You know, but if you can go ahead and give me that kind of stuff and all, all the fine clothing and then, who knows? He probably, oh, there's Gideon. There's our hero. But yet Gideon is mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11 as an example of faith. And as an example of what he did for the Lord. As an example, not one to be placed on a pedestal to idolize as a hero. Okay? Now, go to 1 Samuel chapter 8. 1 Samuel chapter 8. Okay? Like I said, idolatry and, this, and what man puts as hero, they are intrinsically linked. Okay? Because... Uh, with some of these people, um, you know, <laughs> hero and idol, idol, I mean, they're one and the same with a lot of these people. Again, the people who, uh, who uh, defend Mark the Messenger, he's not only their idol, but he's their hero. And he's leading you to hell. John MacArthur, he's his own God. He, write, he wrote his own Bible. Okay? 1 Samuel, chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 9. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second Ab Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre, and took bribes and perverted judgment. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. Verse 6. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee. They have rejected me. I shall reign over them. Now, of course, this uh, and this talks about, and we're going to look at this in Deuteronomy chapter 17 about. Well, well let's look at that right now. Uh, hold your place there and go to Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 14 on to verse 20. When thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shall possess it, and shall dwell therein, and shall say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. And we already looked in Hosea what happened when they said a prince is not by him. Okay? One from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. But he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt, to the end that he should not multiply horses, for as much as the Lord has said, ye shall not, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Don't go down to Egypt. Don't go back to the world that he called you out of. Unfortunately, Solomon really blew this. Okay? Good example. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. Solomon blew all this again. But yes, the Lord gave him these things. Yes, he did. But see... He had too many wives and went to his head. Okay? It, see, his success went to his head. Okay? And his wives, his over the thousand women that he had, turned away his heart from the Lord. Okay? And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests of the Levites. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them, that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren, and that he turn not aside from the commandment, 
to the right hand or to the left, to the end that he may prolong his days and his kingdom, he and his children, in the midst of Israel. Go back to Samuel, chapter 8. Okay? And of course, the establishing of a king was necessary for prophecy. Of course, because God himself, God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of David, King of the Jews, he's going to be ruling and reigning as king in Jerusalem. So, it was an inevitability thing, okay? It was bound to happen. It was going to happen that Israel's like, well, we want a king. Deuteronomy 17, and here we see the fulfillment of it, okay? But it is noted, and the, verse 7, And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people, and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. They wanted a visible thing to look to. Oh, and they will have a visible person to look to during the kingdom of heaven. When they see him coming down out of the clouds with us who are redeemed at the redemption of the purchased possession. They're going to have a king to look to. They are going to have a king to look to. Who is going to be God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. So see, it plays in part with prophecy. Okay? Verse 8. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherein, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now therefore hearken unto their voice. Howbeit, yet protest solemnly unto them, and shew them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. And while we're here, verses 19 on to verse 22. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and said, Nay, but we will have a king over us, that we also may be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us, and go out before us and fight our battles. And the fulfillment will be of that in the kingdom of heaven with our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay, the son of David. Okay. And Samuel heard all the words of the people, and he rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto their voice, and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man unto his city. And of course the first king, Saul. Some will argue, well, uh, Abimelech was the first king. Uh, no, no. God did not appoint Abimelech or Ahimelech in the book of Judges. No, no. The first king of Israel was Saul. Boy, he turned out great, didn't he? Okay. Now, let's go to Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14. We want verses 1 under verse 5. Again, the setting up of an individual to look to. Okay? Ultimately, with what we just looked at in Samuel and concerning Deuteronomy, that plays in part with prophecy of God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, ruling as king in Jerusalem. Okay? That all plays part in the prophecy that is going to be fulfilled at his second coming. Yes. But see this idea of having a person, spirit, soul, and body, to look to, okay, not just a statue, but a person to look to, who is not God, by the way. See, Saul wasn't God. King David wasn't God. It's going to take God himself as king in the kingdom of heaven, okay? Do you get it? Okay? Okay? I know you do. But, Numbers chapter 14, verses 1 under verse 5. All the kind of, this was after, you know, the spying out of the land. In uh, Numbers chapter 13, where the Lord's like, okay, send these guys out there to search the land. They bring back the stuff, and they're like, they see the stuff, and they're like, well, we can't go get them because they are bigger and more powerful than we are. We can't overcome them. We can't do anything with them. Uh, Jeff and Caleb and uh, Joshua, they were the only ones who were like, whoa, hey, we can do it. Let's go. Just let's trust the Lord and do that. And the Lord himself said, uh, I'm going to be with you. See, see, there it is. We, we talked about this, I believe, in the previous video. Uh, there it is. Go get it. 
I'm with you. You're going to get it. I'm with you. I promise. You'll get it. Just trust me and let's go get it. But see, the spies that came back, they said, oh no. They brought up an evil report of the land. And in doing that, verse, uh, chapter 14, verses 1 and verse 5, And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God, and you've got to be careful what you wish for, okay? <laughs> really. Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in the wilderness? And if you were to read chapter 14, uh, God heard that, and he didn't like it. It's like, okay, punk you. That's what you want? You got it. The Lord gave it to him. Like I said, you really got to be careful what you ask the Lord for. Okay? He might give it to you. Roll that around in your head for a little while. Okay. And wherefore hath the Lord brought us in unto this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey, were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain. Oh, maybe a hero? And let us return into Egypt. It says captain. But maybe a hero? Ooh, a hero? A hero. Mm. Oh, maybe a, uh, a hero in arms? A hero in learning? Mm. Or someone who is illustrious, moral indeed, but supposed by the populace to partake of immortality? A hero? Mm. A hero. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. Hmm. Hmm. Now, back to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel, chapter 17 now. I want to show you this. I want to show you this. 1 Samuel, chapter, not 2 Samuel, Brad. Or is it 2 Samuel? No, 1 Samuel chapter 17. Okay? 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 4 on to verse 11. And there went out a champion, which appears three times in Scripture, champion. And what is champion today, or uh, NBA champion, or NFL champion, or World Wrestling Federation champion, right? Hmm. Champion. I know uh, that what Mr. Webster defines champion as, but let's let's read this. Let's read this. Champion. Hmm. Was this champion perhaps the hero of the people whom he was champion of? Oh, really? Really? Hmm. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had an helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of brass, and he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed six hundred shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. So Goliath, and he was huge, decked out in armor, probably muscular, probably bigger. Goliath could probably pound Joe Rogan and The Rock into an oblivion with one of his hands tied behind his back and his other hand broken. Okay, this is Goliath, okay? The champion of the Philistines. Hmm. Hmm. Okay? And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine? <laughs> 
and ye servants to Saul, choose you a man for you. Let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and kill me, and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. Oh, let's have ourselves a fight for the championship, right? <laughs> Do you see it? And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Oh boy. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. So, the armies that were there, but yet, out comes this champion. Champion. Hmm. Doesn't say hero. But who is a champion? One of great valor? One who has won a prize? A hero at valor? A hero of learning? The main character of a story or a romance? <laughs> or one who is mortal indeed, but elevated by the people to immortality? I know champion and hero are two different words. I know that. I know that. Things that are different are not the same. But how they elevated this champion, the Philistines, and how the Israelites looked upon this man. Hmm. He was a champion of the Philistines. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. But I'm going to suggest to you that he was held in admiration as their hero. I bet you. I bet you. And now let's skip to verses 23 on to verse 24. Okay, and David's talking with the people and whatnot. And as he talked with them, ta uh, David talking with these people, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. And David heard them. Champion. Now, champion does not mean hero. And hero does not mean champion. Things that are different are not the same. Yes. Okay? But like I'm telling you. Okay? Champion. Goliath was the champion. The favored or whatever. The, the head, whatever of the Philistines. But they had him in reverence as their hero. He was their champion. But as their champion, they had him in reverence as their hero. Okay? Champion and hero are two different things. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Just like uh, idolatry and idol and hero are two different things. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. But see, one can make a hero out of an idol. One can make a hero out of a champion. Hmm? And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him. And were sore afraid. Oh, oh! And he, and as he talked with him, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. And David heard them. All the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from from fled from him, and were sore afraid. And were sore afraid. Yeah, yeah. And let's read verse twenty-five. And the men of Israel said. Have ye seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And he shall be, and it shall be, that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make him, and make his father's house free in Israel. And while we're here, let's look at verses 50 and 51 in Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 17. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with the stone. Took a stone and a sling, slung it, boom, dotted his eye, got him right in the forehead, and Goliath fell face first. A lot of things like you see these Hollywood depictions, you see Goliath falling backwards. No, he got plunked, and then he fell forward. Okay, he fell face first. Okay. So, did the, so David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and smote the Philistine, and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. 
Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine, and took his sword and drew it out of the, and drew it out of the sheath thereof, and slew him, and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. Their whole army, they saw just one man died, and they all ran. Very, very interesting. Now, now let's go to the book of Acts. Let's go to the book of Acts. Okay. Acts, we want Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. And we want verses 20 on to verse 23. Acts chapter 12, verses 20 on to verse 23. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord to him, and having made Blastus the king's chamberlain their friend, desiring peace, desired peace, because their country was nursed by the king's country. And upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne, and made an oration unto them. In a royal apparel, royal apparel, and spake to the people. Hmm. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God, not of a man. Oh, boy. You know, you think about how David and Saul, like uh, Saul has slayed his thousands and David his ten thousands, how they dance for the king and whatnot like that, whatnot, you might be thinking about that. But what did David do? He's, he counted himself as nothing. Who am I, Lord? Who am I? You read the Psalms. You read the Psalms. You read how David was humbled for letting himself, for letting his uh, his uh, glory and stuff go to his head when he decided to go and steal Bathsheba away from uh, Uriah the Hittite. Okay. David was a humbled man, and he never got away from that iniquity. Yes, he is exalted. Yes. Yes, yes, he is exalted. Yes, he is. He is. He is. He is. King David. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. But you look at what he went through because of Bathsheba. That sin. The sword never departed from his house. And David was a greatly humbled man because of it. Okay? He knew his place. Here, Herod. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God, and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory. Right there, boy. And he was eaten of worms, and gave up the, the ghost. David gave God the glory. David gave God the glory. He did. He gave... I mean, you, you read up on King David. Read up on King David. He gave God the glory for everything. Even for the suffering, the consequences of his actions. He gave God the glory. But see, when you have a hero, you're giving your hero the glory. And here, here I am. When the people said, and the people gave a shout saying, it is the voice of a God and not of a man. It's like, whoa, hey, what, 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 what's wrong with you? Hey, look, I've, I'm, I see, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a man just like you. What's wrong with you? Look at some of these Christian preachers who have men emulate them and turn them into their heroes and all their success goes right to their head. They don't rebuke their disciples, their followers. It's like, uh, hey, you know, some of you are making an idol or a hero out of me. I'm not your hero. I'm not your idol. Okay? I am a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? The Lord rebuke you. You need to stop that. Do they do that? No, they don't. Why? Because the praises of men goes right to their head. The Lord isn't for it. Now, go to Psalm 115. Now, uh, last week... Lord had a uh, had um, a video on Psalm 115, but for what we're talking about, we have to address this again. 
Psalm 115. Psalm 115. Verses 4 and verse 8. Now this is again talking about an idol, a statue. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's what it's specifically talking about. But is that the only way this can be applied for us today to instruct us in righteousness? No. But it is talking about an idol, absolutely. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. Who makes heroes out of these people? Man does. Man does. God gives other men as an example. Uh, as an example of men who put God first. Okay? And when they messed up, oh, we, we have the things that are written for our learning to learn from their mistakes. Like King David. Like Gideon. Okay? They made mistakes. But at the end of it all, they did put God first. Even though they made grievous mistakes. Okay? Man makes heroes. Man makes idols. Okay? Idol and hero are two different things, yes. But they're linked. They are linked. Because who, who puts those... Who, who makes what a hero? Man. 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 Okay? Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. And they're taught, this is taught, describing a statue. Yes. Okay? They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. They have Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. Verse 8 again. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. A fool who says in his heart there is no God. Now that is describing a statue. Yes. Yes. But these people who are made into idols or heroes, Elevate them to Godhood. Hmm? <laughs> They're the work of men's hands. They have eyes, but they see not. They see not like God. They have ears, uh, but they don't hear like God. They have mouths, but they don't speak like God. Give me a break! Give me a break. Okay? And Psalm 49, okay? Psalm 49... Psalm 49, verses 11 on to 14. These people who trust in their riches, that trust in their wealth, that trust in their good name, who trust in their mystique, their legend, what they've done. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their, lands after their own names. Nevertheless, man being in honor abideth not. He is like the beasts that perish. This, their way is their folly. Yet their posterity approve their sayings. Well, see, it's, it's a thing of pra pragmatism, which is sin, evil. Okay, well, see, what I'm doing must work, so hey. Like sheep, they are laid in the grave. Death shall feed on them. The upright shall have dominion over them in the morning, and their beauty shall consume in the grave from their dwelling. Mm. Mm. And let us not forget Isaiah chapter 40. Oh, oh. See, at the center of all of this is man elevating man to a status of godhood. Making man an idol, making of man a hero. Because who has heroes? Men. Who makes heroes? Men. Men make heroes. Okay? God may, gives examples of men who did great acts, but put God first. God first. Okay? Isaiah chapter 40, verses 6 on to verse 8. 
Isaiah chapter 40, verse 6 on to verse 8. The voice cr said, Cry. And he said, What shall I cry? All <laughs> flesh is grass, and all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, word of our God standeth forever. Hmm. Yeah. But the word of our God standeth forever. Now go to James. James chapter 5. James chapter 5. James chapter 5. We want verses 17 and 18. Just two verses. James 5, come on, fingers work with me, verses 17 and 18. Elias, Elijah, was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Elijah who a lot of the Jewish people see as their hero. And he, along with Moses, is going to come back to give testimony onto the Jewish people, the Hebrew people during the time of Jacob's trouble, the, uh, the two witnesses, okay? But see, we have to remember, Elias and Moses, both, were men of what? Of like passions. They weren't gods. But see, a lot of the Hebrew people have elevated Moses to the position of God and even Elisha. And both of them of themselves would be like, hey, and you read in the Torah, Moses is like, who am I? Who am I? Who are we? Okay? <laughs> and Elijah himself, it's like, it's not fit for me to live. Okay? They were men. They were men. Not gods. They were men. Moved by God. Used of God. Yes. But they were not God. And both Moses and Elijah, uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble, they're going to be turning, trying to turn everybody to the Lord. See, putting God first. That's the point. That's the point of this. That is the point of this. Now go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 12 on to verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 12 on to verse 16. I remember that Peter Ruckman, in one of his sermons, said about uh, verse 12, if you're going to compare yourself with someone else, make sure you pick yourself a big one. <laughs> I, I don't know what sermon that was and where he said that I don't remember but he's like yeah if you're going to pick yourself self someone to compare yourself to make sure you pick yourself a big one wow okay 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 12 on to verse 16 for we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Ooh. 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 This, 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 is a, this is a problem, isn't this? For we dare not make ourselves of the number. Come out from amongst them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. Okay? Or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. Ooh. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Hmm. Let's continue. But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God hath 
distributed to us a measure to reach even unto you. Apollos, uh, uh, Apollos planted, I watered, but God gave the increase. Mm. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reached not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ. Not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly. To preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. Verses 17 and 18, excuse me, 17 and 18. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. For not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. And what is Paul uh, referencing? Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9. We want verses 23 on to verse 24. Jeremiah 9, verses 23, on to verse 24. Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Ooh. And Jeremiah chapter 17 now, verses 5 on to verse 8. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. And maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land and not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope is the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh. But her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Okay? Hmm. That's interesting. That's interesting. Now, let's go to Romans chapter 15 really quick. Just one verse. We have to remember this, okay? We have to remember this. Romans chapter 15 just one verse, verse 4. Okay. When it comes to that in the Old Testament. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Okay? That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And then go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Just one verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11, which says... Now all these things happen unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. A lot of you right away are talking are like, well, what about Hebrews chapter eleven? Go to Hebrews chapter eleven. Okay. Hebrews chapter eleven. They 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 say to this that many call these. The heroes of the faith. Mm. Heroes of the faith. Mm. And again, in considering the dictatorial definition of hero, especially number four, in pagan mythology, a hero was an illustrious person, moral indeed, but supposed by the populace to partake of immortality and after his death to be placed among the gods, hmm. main character of a story, or a hero in learning, 
or a hero in arms? Hmm. The heroes of the faith, they call us. And notice this. Um, notice the heading in my Cambridge there. You see that, what that says there? You see that? It doesn't say heroes of faith, does it? It says what? Examples of faith in the fathers of old time. Hmm. Also, too, the book of Hebrews is written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Who have to endure to the end to be saved during the time of Jacob's trouble. Today, in this dispensation, we don't have to endure to the end to be, uh, to be saved of anything. Okay? Okay? Oh, let's see. We read about Abel. Abel. The dispensation of the patriarchs. Okay? We also read of Enoch. And also Noah and Abraham in the dispensation of the patriarchs where they had to have faith in what God was going to do. Okay? Differing from our dispensation today. Similar but different in that respect because today it is finished. Okay? All right? And then um, in verses 9 and 10. By faith he sojourned at, in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. So they were looking for what God was going to do. Very similar during the time of Jacob's trouble. The Jews who realized midway through the time of Jacob's trouble that, oh, wow, we messed it up, okay? They have to look, they are looking forward to Jesus' second coming with us who went up at the redemption of the purchased possession, okay? That's what they're looking forward to during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? And also verse 11 talks about Sarah, okay? During the dispensation of the patriarchs, okay? And then, uh, let's see, um, uh, uh, Abraham, then Jacob, the patriarchs, Moses, Moses, okay, Moses, all righty, uh, how he forsook Egypt and whatnot, and then it talks about, uh, uh, what was this, uh, uh, I'm looking at, just scanning this, uh, by faith, uh, verse 29, by faith they passed through the Red Sea as dry, uh, by dry land, which the Egyptians saying to do were drowned, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down during the law, okay, after they were compassed about seven days. So you have Abel being mentioned, okay, the time of the patriarchs. We have Moses and also about Jericho under the law, okay, under the law, faith and works, all right? And look at here, uh, let's pick up at verses 32. And let's read on to verse 40, the close of the chapter, okay? And what shall I say more? And what shall I more say? Excuse me. For the time would fail me to talk of Gideon under the law. Faith works. Faith in what? And, and faith that God would honor you for doing what he prescribed, okay? Animal sacrifices for sin, okay? All right, and of Barak, judges, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David. These are guys who are under the law. Okay, so are you seeing that in Hebrews chapter eleven? Okay, the dispensation of the patriarchs, the dispensation of the law. Okay, okay, of David also, and Samuel of the and of the prophets, again, under the law, all right, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, yes, they did, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to fight the armies of the aliens, women received their dead, raised to life again, talking about how Elisha 
Grace that one. Oh, no. Um, put a staff on it. Yeah, Elisha. Not Elisha. Elisha. Okay. How uh, put the staff. Oh, was that Elijah? That was Elijah, wasn't it? Who, uh, well, yeah, because it was Gehazi, right? Gehazi. Yeah, who raised the one kid to life and put his. Yeah, excuse me. It was Elijah. Okay. Making reference to that. And let me see. Is that. The, yeah, and there's a reference for it in the references. Okay. Sorry. Let's continue. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonments, like Jeremiah. Okay? They were stoned, were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Well, most people, when they come to Hebrews chapter 11, talk about the heroes of the faith. Um, they kind of don't want to acknowledge these latter parts. But of uh, count in their revelry and how they were great heroes of the faith. But yet, for God's sake, they were stoned. They were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. Right here. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. See, the book of Hebrews is not written for us today doctrinally, okay? And all these people in Hebrews chapter 11, read it on your own time. There ain't one mention of this current dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. It's all the time of the patriarchs or under the law. Because... During the time of Jacob's trouble, it's going to be faith and works. So the Jews are going to have to look to, or they're going to be in the book of Hebrews. It's like, oh, wow. Especially the latter parts where they were stoned, they were sawn asunder, not wanting to go along with that man of sin, the son of perdition, looking like the Roman Catholic Jesus saying, I am God. See? The examples! The examples! given in Hebrews chapter 11 are all those of differing dispensations where salvation is different in every dispensation. Okay? That's what makes a dispensation a dispensation. Okay? The time of the patriarchs. The time of the law. Okay? Those are the ones that are being mentioned in Hebrews 11. For a dispensation, the time of Jacob's trouble, where it's going to be faith and works. Okay? Those examples, examples of faith, are there for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. For us today to get instruction in righteousness? Absolutely! 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 But are these the heroes of the faith? Scripture doesn't re uh, refer to them as such. Not at all. Hero does not appear in the scriptures. Examples of faith are examples. Not heroes. Not heroes. Because look at the Catholics. They, they make gods of, oh, St. Michael or, oh, St. Bob or whatever. Or Bar Bartholomew or whatever his name was. Uh, St. Bob. Uh, yeah, or whatever, you know? They're heroes. They're little gods. They're idols. Whatever. Idols and heroes are different things, yes. But setting up an idol in your heart, you can make a hero out of it. It can become, become uh, an idol. can become your hero. You see? See what we're getting at? These are examples of faith. Their faith, not them themselves. 
in a dispensation where it's going to be faith and works. They can't take the mark of the beast or else they're doomed to go to hell. Onto a people who don't know what true faith is. Okay? So, it's an example of faith. It's their faith that is being glorified. Faith in what? God who will be coming onto them at the second coming. That's that's what Hebrews chapter 11 is truly about. You aren't to look at the individuals and glorify them per se, but they're examples of their faith. Written for a dispensation that is faith and works. Do you see that? It's faith that is being magnified. Not the people. They are the examples of what? Faith. In whom? In their faith? Like the easy believers and heretics? No. What's your faith in? Who's, who, who is your faith upon? Well, your easy believism, your faith is in your faith. Your faith is in you. Okay? Or or you've called upon the name of the Lord, right? But you're not broken, contrite, and have no fear of the Lord? What's your faith? Oh, that you uttered some. That's pretty big for some of you. That you can say certain things. But yet you're not broken of your self-righteousness. You're not contrite, and you have no fear of the Lord. <laughs> crazy bunch. It's faith that's being magnified. In Romans, uh, Romans, excuse me, in Hebrews chapter 11. It's faith, not the people. Do you understand? Examples of faith in the fathers of old time. Yes. I believe it's wrong to refer to these as the heroes of the faith. These are examples of faith in the fathers of old time. Like, like the heading there in this Cambridge says right there. I believe that is more accurate to say. I believe that is more accurate to say. Now, Philippians chapter 3, just one verse. Philippians chapter 3, okay? Philippians chapter 3, verse 17, okay? Philippians chapter 3, verse 17. Brethren, be followers together of me, and walk, mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. So is Paul to be our hero? Well, well, what did Paul think about that? Well, first, let's go to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Okay? <laughs> Here's something that you can throw at a Catholic about, you know, their first pope. Okay? Here's something that you can throw to them. Uh, Acts chapter 10, verses 21 on to verse 26. Peter had a vision about and uh, the sheep uh, don't call that common what I have cleansed. That's not where he did away with the dietary restrictions. That was done away with the, the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay, but for Peter, the vision was uh, to go on to Gentiles. That Gentiles are grafted in now. Okay, that's what that's talking about. But uh, Acts chapter 10, verses 21 under verse 26. Catholics don't like this one. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause wherefore ye are come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man and one that feareth God, and of good report among all the nations of the Jews, which warned from, was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house, and to hear words of thee. Then called he them in, and lodged them. And on the morrow Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and their friends. <laughs> Check this out. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him, and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. According to Catholics, <laughs> yeah, they call Peter the first pope, and Peter was never a pope. Link in the description box. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. 
<laughs> and yet, Francis, the puppet pope to uh, Sosa, allows people to kiss his hand. And they fall down and worship the pope. And that's okay. Where they're the Catholic's first pope, nonsense, uh, Peter, it's like, stand up. I myself also am a man. Worshipped him as if he were a god. Ooh, worshipping as a god. Huh? Oh, a hero in arms, a hero in learning, the main character of a story. Or a hero was an illustrious person, moral indeed, but supposed by the populace to partake of immortality and after his death to be placed among the gods. So a god amongst them. Mm -hmm. Now, while we're in the book of Acts, while we're in the book of Acts, let's go to Acts 14. Acts 14, verses 8 on to verse 18. And there sat at a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leapt and walked. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lyconia, The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. Ooh. 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 That fourth definition of a hero, huh? And they called Barnabas Jupiter. And Paul Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands onto the gates, and would have done sacrifice with the people. Which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out and saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth, and the sea, and all things that are therein, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he hath left not himself without witness." in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, scarce restrained they the people that they, should not done, that they had not done sacrifice unto them. So these guys were willing to sacrifice unto Paul and them, putting Paul up on a pedestal. Hmm. And interesting enough, now, this doesn't say anything about a hero, yes. But, again, at the definitions of hero, some of you will take people and put them up here as they're mortal men, right? The, the fourth definition. The fourth definition of hero in Webster's 1828 Dictionary. In pagan mythology, a hero was an illustrious person, mortal indeed, but supposed by the populace to partake of immortality and after his death to be placed among the gods. That's what Catholics do with their demigods, their saints. Placed among the gods, little G. Unfortunately, that's what a lot of Ruckmanites have done to Peter Ruckman. Okay? He's their hero. And interesting, here, let's read verses 19 and 20 in Acts chapter uh, 14 here. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, the same people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. So, okay, get that. Uh, the Jews came from Antioch and persuaded the people the people, the ones that were about to offer sacrifice onto these guys, and yet they stoned them, 
Uh, and that's something interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Howbeit, as the disciples stood around about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. And there are many that speculate that during the stoned part, that's where Paul went and saw uh, the third heaven and stuff like that. We don't know. We can only speculate. So how was Paul about people wanting to sacrifice unto him and elevate him to a higher status? Oh, say almost hero status? Oh, and go to Isaiah chapter 51 now. Isaiah chapter 51. Isaiah chapter 51. Scripture calls a lot of what we're looking at emulating. Okay? Isaiah chapter 51, verses 9 on to verse 16. Awake, awake, put on strength. O arm of the Lord, awake as in the ancient days, in the generations of old. Art thou not it that hath cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? Art thou not it which hath dried the sea, the waters of the great deep, that hath made the depths of the sea a way for the ransom to pass over. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return. And come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. I, even I, am he that comforteth you. Who art thou? that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die, and of the Son of Man, which shall be made as grass, and all flesh is grass? Hmm. What is man that thou art mindful of him? And forgettest the Lord thy Maker, that hath stretched forth the heavens, and laid the foundations of the earth, and hast feared continually every day, because of the fury of the oppressors, a oppressor as if he were ready to destroy and what are we reading to verse 16 and where is the fury of the oppressor the captive exile hasteneth, hasteneth that he may be loosed and that he should not die in the pit nor that his bread should fail but I am the Lord thy God that divided the sea whose waves roared the Lord of hosts is his name and I have put my words in thy mouth and I have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth and say unto Zion, Thou art my people. What is man? Huh? What is a man that you elevate them to such a high status when they're nothing more than flesh and blood just like you or I? You know? And who should you fear? Hmm? Uh, a lot of Christians like to dispute this. Uh, Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Verses 1 on to verse 5. <laughs> Luke chapter 12. Verses 1 on to verse 5. In the meantime. When there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people. Insomuch that they trod one upon another. He began to say unto his disciples first of all. Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whosoever ye have, therefore, excuse me, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. And at the, knee, at the name of Jesus Christ every knee shall bow. Okay? And what, is, and what does it say in Revelation chapter 21? Huh? About about our Lord Jesus, or in uh, Revelation chapter 22, uh, verse 12, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. He is our reward. Okay? To give every man according as, it, as his work shall be. 
I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He's talking about himself, the Father. Fear him. Fear him. Okay? And also, uh, Luke chapter 16, Luke chapter 16, verses 13 on to verse 15, okay? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. But God knoweth your hearts, for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. If these people who you hold as their as your heroes were aware of it, they ought to be saying, Hey, I'm nobody's hero. You don't if you're saved, you don't need a hero. Lost people have heroes. We don't need a hero. We have our Father. You don't need a hero. And uh, Luke chapter 17 now. Verses 5 on to verse 10. <laughs> and this is what we got to remember. About man. And especially those of us who are in this position, as some of us are. we got to remember what we are. We're not vain. There are some people, some King James Bible-believing Christians, whose own legend and own mystique have gone whoop, straight to their head. And they're taken in their own glamour, in their own glory. Sounds like Satan, doesn't it? who is captivated by his own brightness, by his own whatever he's doing. See, their success goes to their head. And when you got people making heroes out of these people and idolizing them and putting them on pedestals, like I said, in the latter years of Peter Ruckman's life, in some of his sermons, He's milking that crowd, and that crowd's milking him. It's one reason why, you know, praise the Lord, not in a church building. Okay. Luke chapter 17, verses 5 on to verse 10. And the apostle said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto the sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. But which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him, By and by, when he is come from the field, go and sit down to meat, and wilt not rather say unto him, Make ready wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself, and serve me, till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink? Doth he thank that servant, because he did the things that were commanded him? I trust not. Here's what we got to remember. Here's what we all have to remember. So likewise, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. I'm doing what I'm told. This is my this is what my duty is. This is what the Lord has assigned to me. And I'm nothing. I'm nobody. Praise the, praise the Lord. I don't have a lot of subscribers. Thank you to those of you who do who are subscribed to the to the channel the Lord has given me. Thank you. But I'm nobody. And I want to keep it that way. <laughs> I don't want a thousand subscribers. Why? Because I'm afraid it'll go to my head. And look at these Christians here on YouTube who have thousands of subscribers. 
almost some of them a quarter, even half a million. And they're King James Bible believing Christians, right? Look at them. The numbers go straight to their head. Gone straight to their head. See, that's what the praise of men does to you. And when you soak it up like you're sunbathing, oh, you got to be careful, man. Got to be careful. Got to be really careful. Really careful. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Paul. Do you think Paul would approve if he found out that he was your hero? Paul had a pride problem. He did. He absolutely did. The Lord warned him, what, three times? Two or three times? I don't go to Jerusalem. But he went anyway. Okay? He went anyway. He had a pride problem. But if Paul found out that you made him your hero, how do you think he would feel about that? Hmm? Did you, you, you turn your attention to the Lord, not to me. Okay? Apollos planted, I watered, but God gave the increase. Will the scripture say, let another man praise thee and not thine own lips? That's true. That's true. But see, when it starts, when you start letting it go to your head, and boasting yourself, that's where the problem comes in. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 on to verse 11. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. I'm just giving to him of the Lord. How that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that he was seen of Kephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of about five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. Last of all, last of all, he was seen of me also, as one born out of due season. For I am the least of the apostles, that am, not me, that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the Christians. Oh, excuse me, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believe. Paul would find out that he's your hero. He's my hero. He's our example. He is our example. Yes, be followers of me. Do what I'm doing. Yes. Yes. But if he were, if Paul were to find out that he's your hero, I think he'd smack you. I really do. So, yeah. What I did, the way I did things, yeah, that followed. But I'm not your hero, pal. You look to your father. See, a hero, I believe, is a replacement for the father that you need, that some of you don't have. And if you are saved of the church of the living God, and you've made someone your hero, 
Uh, uh. Oh, brother, sister, no. 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 We don't need a hero. Hero, heroes are for the lost people, brethren. Heroes are for the lost people. Heroes are not for us. It's for them. The lost. We have, we have examples. We have a cloud of witnesses. Yes, we do. Okay? Yes, we do. And that, even that is, uh, you know. But we have examples. No one, no one is to take the place of Christ in your life. And if you're saying, well, my hero is uh, John MacArthur, God forbid, but John MacArthur, uh, the way he follows Christ, hence he is my hero. John MacArthur, of course, would sign your Bible for you and relish in your worship of him. So never mind. But the point is, well, he is my hero on how to worship God. No, he is your example. You don't exalt the man over the way he shows you to follow the Father through the scriptures. See, that's the thing. That's the thing. So many of you have made an idol out of a man, a hero, made him your hero. But if they are of the church of the living God, teaching you the way of Christ to write, it's the scriptures that you follow. And if they are living by that example, yes, he is your example to follow by the scriptures, as Paul did. Yes, but they're not, they're not your heroes. You don't need a hero, man. What's wrong with you? You don't need a hero. And if you need a hero, you don't have Jesus Christ. It's that simple. Now go to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 5 on to verse 16. Verses 5 of 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 5 on to verse 16. Now the end of the commandment is charity, which is self-sacrifice out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned, from which some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. Oh, right there, verse 7. Uh, a lot of these coadjutors, uh, like Mark the Messenger uh, and also other guys um, who, uh, yeah, yeah. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, sodomites. For men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faith, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor, and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. And one of my favorite verses in all of Scripture. This is a faithful saying, worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of whom I am chief, the least of all. The least of all. If Paul knew that you made him your hero, he would be offended. As would any of the church of the living God. 
don't, I'm not your hero. What's wrong with you? Where, where are you sending people? To the Lord Jesus Christ. How? Do the scriptures. Okay? Do the scriptures. We don't need a hero. We have our Father. And Jesus Christ is not our hero, dear people. If you are saved, born again, converted, He is our Father. He is our Father. And Father far outdoes a mere hero. Because a hero is one who is a hero by man. Not by God. That what? That no flesh may exalt itself in the presence of God. And you make a hero out of a man. Man makes men heroes. Not God. Not God. But those out there, Jude, Go to Jude, just one verse, just a couple of one verse references here. Jude, verse 16. The, but there are, you know, they're out there, out, they're out there, these Christians, the, the King James Bible believing Christians, with half, a quarter to a half a million subscribers, almost a hundred thousand subscribers, whose own enigma. They're an enigma. Their own legis, legend, their own legacy has gone whoop, straight to their head. These are murmurous complainers walking after their own lusts and their mouth speaketh great swelling words having men's person in admiration because of advantage. And oh, they revel in it. They were, I'm going to drop a name here. That Robert Breaker guy? <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he has almost a half a million subscribers. You talk about a guy who's, whose head is whoosh, that big. Same with most of the King James Bible-believing Christians. Their heads are this big because of their fame that men have lavished on them. And all the while, I'd love to see some of these King James Bible-believing Christians come out and say, Hey, look, look, I'm not your hero, okay? I am just a saved sinner, saved by grace through faith, walking uh, according to the scriptures, okay? And the way I walk, sure, let that be an example to, unto you, but I'm not your hero, I'd love to see some of these King James Bible believing Christians have the stones to do a video like that. I'd, I'd love to see Mr. Breaker do a video. It's like, hey, I'm not your hero, okay? I'm not someone, I'm not, no, you look to the Lord. You look to the Lord through the scriptures, okay? Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm called to be an example unto you, but I'm not your hero. I'm not your hero. I'm walking according to the scriptures. I'm following the Lord according to the scriptures. That's the example. That's the example. Go to the Lord through the scriptures. Well, how do I do that? Oh, okay. Oh, that's how you that's how he's okay. Okay. And then you go on your own and you follow the Lord according to the scriptures on your own. You don't have a hero. Good Lord, what's wrong with you? You got a hero, making a man your hero. We don't need a hero. We have our Father. And what? You're going to make the Lord your hero? You're going to make him that? He, he's God. Who are you? We are unprofitable servants. What are you going to do for God? He's the one who made you. He's the one who made you. He's your father. And you are to serve him as 
He is your Father. And you are to fear Him. If you feared the Lord, He wouldn't be just a mere hero unto you. How absurd. How absurd. How absurd! And also, uh, about this, uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, just one verse, verse 19. <laughs> These guys whose numbers go right to their head. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, the same he is brought into bondage. Brought into the bondage of public opinion in the court of men. <laughs> yeah. Go to Ephesians chapter 3. We're almost done. you got to remember, brethren, people. The people of today are looking for a hero to come out of nowhere and rescue them from the plight of this world. That man of sin, the son of perdition. I forget what video it is uh, where Prince Charles actually made a reference onto the son of perdition. Didn't say the son of perdition. He didn't even say antichrist, but he made a reference to a single individual person, spirit's own body, that's coming. The hero to the world. Like some of you, my countrymen, you sad people of my countrymen who have made Trump your hero. He's your hero. You're a fool. You're a fool! Ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 on to the close of the chapter. Wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, my tribulations for you, which is your glory. Paul's our hero! Uh, no, look what Paul does. For this cause I bow my knees to, unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's like, wow, Paul went through that for the Lord. He gave us an example to follow. And what did Paul do? He bowed his knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Like I said, Paul, if he were to find out that some of you hold him as your hero, he would be offended and he would rebuke you. I'm, I, I, you can't convince me otherwise. Oh, be followers of me. My example of living after Christ according to the scriptures. That is the example. You don't elevate the man as your hero, but you follow his example. Can you discern between that? Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye be rooted and grounded in love, may be able, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length, and depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. And what power worketh in us? The Lord Jesus Christ himself. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. And 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. you got to remember what it says in the book of Daniel, dear friend. That, that man of sin, the son of perdition, he's going to come in peaceably. He's going to obtain the kingdom by flatteries. And through his uh, policy, um, he'll make craft to prosper. And through peace, he'll destroy many. 
Many people, when the Jesuits uh, uh, unleashed their psychological operation, uh, the Poison Crown, okay, so many, we need a hero to come along. We need, we need a hero to save us. And that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be the hero that these people are looking for. You need a hero? I pity you. I, I, I truly pity you if you need a hero. I really do. I really do. Because we are to be followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And our example is Paul. How Paul followed the Lord is how you and I, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, that's how we are to follow the Lord today. Okay? We are to search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. And we are to follow Paul's example. Paul is not my hero. Paul is not my hero. Okay? If I ever said that before, forgive me. I, I, I was wrong to say that. I was wrong to say that. Paul is my example. Paul is my brother. Paul has done greater things for the Lord than I ever will. Yes, than ever you will. Amen. Yeah, he wrote the majority of the New Testament. The, the Lord used him, excuse me, to write the majority of the New Testament. But see, Paul is my brother. As Peter is my brother. Okay, We are all one in Christ Jesus. Right? All right? In salvation, there is no distinction today okay the sting of heroes I believe needs to be done done away with you don't need a hero friend and if you do need a hero you don't have Jesus Christ it's as simple as that it's as simple as that that's going to be it for this video I know some of you will take this the wrong way, and I'm okay with that, and I'm fine with that. Okay? I'm fine with that. We don't need a hero. <laughs> there's, a, there's no shortage of heroes, are there? Are there? You need the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. And again, if a man is your hero, then I question whether or not you have Jesus Christ at all. It's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching this if you do. Thank you for those of you who help us and pray for us. And um, we, <laughs> we need all the prayers we can get, brethren. We need your prayers. Please pray for us. Please pray for one another, your brethren your sisters, the church of the living God. And don't exalt one another above the Lord. The Lord is the one who is worthy of all praise. And if another man's going to praise you, that's okay. But don't let it go to your head. Don't let it go to your head. Look on here on YouTube and you'll see a lot of examples of men who have let the praises of men go to their head. So, that's going to be it. Thank you for watching this if you do. I understand that this will be misunderstood. Um, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Because this is what the Lord wanted me to say to you. I love you. We'll see you in the next video. Whatever that will be. Okay?